Hello guys and girls, King Happy here. Today, by popular request, I have a tutorial and explanation video on my smart shifting floors that I designed for my Let's Play world. So, I use this for my gold farm and my witch farm on my Let's Play. And this is the basic model. Mobs go through, works very nicely, very well. So, this is the basic model. This is the bare minimum you need to make it work. First of all, we'll build it, and then I'll explain how it works, why it works, and why it's good and efficient in its own way, even with all these resources. So, what do you need to build it? When well, here is all the resources, you can pause the video if you want to see all of them, and also list the components in the description for reference. And these two rotten flesh here are signifying two blocks, any block at all, just two blocks, which you don't really need, just useless blocks. So, let's get these out, and let's get on with it. So, for these smart shifting floors, they can push a maximum of 12 blocks. So this bit in the middle is 12, and I'm going to here and set out a 12 long block. And these are all unit, so they go each slice a go. So first of all, all you need to do is get your piston on the end. So it's going to do this end as one, and then we'll leave one gap, and we'll do the other end. Just like so. Now from this, we need to get a signal to it. So on each side you have two different ways of doing this. This side uses one comparator and the other side uses three. Now this is so that it gives enough timing so that the floor will shift one way and then there'll be a delay and then it'll shift back the other way. And in this design it will always end up at the same side. So you get two hoppers here facing to each other. You put your one item in one. You will then get a sticky piston and you get a redstone block that goes on top. You then put a solid block and a tripwire hook on that. You then do the same thing for the other side, but you've only got one comparator. So on these go, like so. On goes you, on goes that, and in goes one item. On goes that, and then we put our string between them. You use 17 to get all the way across for a maximum sized one. Now you can do it smaller than this, it doesn't matter, as long as you do no longer than this, because it wouldn't work. And you are, like so. And all you do is go on it then. And it works perfectly. And whenever you stop, it always end up at the same side. So over here, these are all lined up. Even if I run between them, fall through them, and run around, they'll always end up at the same side. Like so. Okay, so now onto the explanation part of the video. First of all, you don't actually need to use actual quartz half subs for this. You can use any block which allows things to fall through it when they move. So any half slab at all, and certain things like redstone blocks work as well. Anything that lets them actually glitch through as they move. Secondly, this was made as a witch farm. So there are no components in this which give off light at all. So you can check this by going your BL value on your F3. Go on the pads, see it's going, BL value is still zero. So there's no light at all in the system, which also lets you not need to cover up any of the components for the actual light need. So it gives you more air blocks in the system, which speeds up spawning. Next of all, you can customize this a bit. So if you want to stop mobs getting off the actual pads onto your components, you can use things like stair blocks or glass or half slabs or anything that doesn't actually interfere with the tripwires to stop them walking away from the middle of the pads. That's fine. It gives you less air blocks in the system, but does stop things escaping. Next, you can replace these two comparators with actual repeaters. It makes it a little bit cheap if you want to, but then you have to think about the light level. If you're doing this in the nether, then light won't matter as much. Next of all, you can completely mob proof this. So these components are mob proof, pistons are mob proof, half slab on top of this, half slab on top of this. If you have a farm which the pistons can be extended for a little while, so if any sort of mob is staying here for a little while, then you might want to have an extra half slab on the end just to stop any mob spawning at all. So, what are the advantages of this and what is a smart shifting floor? I haven't even told you that. So a smart shifting floor is where it's only activated when something actually spawns, first of all. And secondly, it will keep shifting until that mob is out of the system. So a cow comes here, it will shift. Now if something gets stuck here, it will keep shifting until it's dislodged. That's why it's smart. It speeds up actual rates for all mobs because it's not going to sit there and wait. You can get designs which will wait and then shift the whole floor and then back. You can get signs where, when they're activated, then it'll move all of them. Now that reduces rates because every space you're moving, the less chance there is for more mobs to spawn at the same time. So with this, 
This is actually clever, so that when one thing's activated, one either side of that space also is moved. And this is because there are large problems in ones which are completely independent of each single line. If you had that, and a mob spawned and walked over the side, sort of end up in the middle, then you would get two floors shifting at slightly different times. And unless they're in sync, the mob will not fall through the middle. So this, get a mob spawning here, walks onto here. You see they're still moving at the same time, so the mob will still fall through. If you get a mob spawn in the middle, then either side of it, it will still fall through. Awesome. You get things like a cow, which might go over more than one tripwire. Still falls through. Very good. And the last main consideration was lag. So this is a very, very server-friendly design. There are no light updates at all. There are two pistons per side which only go when a mob is there or when a thing is there, whatever you want. So it's very good for that. There's no clocks in this. There's, it's not always running. It's only running when there's mobs. So it's very, very good and it can deal with a huge amount of volume, which is very, very, very cool. So that about concludes the video, the tutorial and the explanation. Any more questions, please ask them in the comments. And thank you for joining me, guys, and I'll see you next time.